Hey, folks, we have a ton of stories. And while I was going to be on camera and do like a, a big presentation for it, honestly, I'm a little bit pressed for time today because I got a whole bunch of extra sleep kind of in my recovery from college finals, which, yes, folks, I kicked colleges, but it's just a single semester. But hey, straight A's is straight A's. Let's get into the stories because we have a bunch of them, uh, including a massive internal Capcom leak that has details of Monster Hunter Rise on Switch and its exclusivity. So Capcom had a massive leak happen uh, of internal documents. I'm not going to go over all of the finer details, but we are going to deal with Monster Hunter Rise specifically since that is a major upcoming Capcom release. Uh, and we find out that Nintendo paid between 15 and $22 million USD for actual exclusivity of the game. There's a couple reports out there that say $6 million. They are wrong. If you look at the raw documents, it's actually 15 to $22 million. Now, what we learned from this is that $2 million was spent by Nintendo just to have, well, Capcom consider bringing the game to Switch at all. Basically, the game wasn't originally planned to be for Switch, and Nintendo's like, hey, if we throw you a couple million dollars, can you make a Switch version? All right? Like, that's weird, but sure, at least Nintendo is trying to get us more games. Now, the other options included in this contract uh, included a $13 million additional option from that $2 million for console exclusivity, which we now know has obviously been exercised as Monster Hunter Rise is console exclusive to Nintendo Switch. It's potentially exclusive overall because there was an optional additional $7 million dollars aka to hit 22 million to prevent it from also releasing on pc however in the leaked documents there are a ton of pc specs available because of this it does look likely that nintendo took the 15 million dollar option which does allow for a pc version to exist but for it not to be announced until six months after it releases on switch and then released a full nine months after it lands on the switch so aka switch has a has a full console exclusivity but a timed exclusivity deal from the pc version the deal does absolutely unequivocally prevent the game from releasing on xbox or playstation so basically this will be a switch and later on in 2021 a pc game so yeah, that's that's the way things are looking. That's the way the, the deal is constructed. What I find interesting here is that one, Nintendo had to pay any money for them to consider a Switch version in the first place, especially considering the long history of Monster Hunter on uh, the platform. Now, Nintendo and Capcom used to have an exclusivity contract in place with Monster Hunter in the first place that Nintendo spent money on. So Nintendo spending money for more exclusive Monster Hunter games isn't unheard of. And while that figure of $15 million at the bare minimum uh, does sound like a lot, there's a very high chance this is a 5 to $10 million seller on Switch. And because of that, Nintendo and Capcom are going to make money hand over fist on that deal. So uh, it, it, it's... It's weird, but this is what happens when you pay for exclusive games. Everybody out there pays for exclusive games. Sony's paying for exclusive games like the new Final Fantasy 16. Obviously, Microsoft's just straight up buying studios. So, yeah, this is not unusual. We just don't hear Nintendo's contract details on exclusive games very often. Just like we don't know the contract details for Bayonetta 3. That's another game. Nintendo has paid for exclusivity on. So this isn't unusual. It's just unusual that we actually hear the kind of figures that Nintendo is, is tossing around behind the scenes. Now, Nintendo had a major event today. I'm sure you guys know about it. The Nintendo Indie World. There was a bunch of games talked about, a lot of really cool announcements. But I'm just going to focus on the big, on what at least what I feel is the biggest one, uh, just in terms of current popularity of indie games, and that is Among Us. It is coming to Switch today. It might even already be out on Switch in your region. It kind of depends. Uh, it has a base projected, quote-unquote projected price uh, at the time of reporting here of $4.99, which does undercut the price on Steam for PC. But again, can't really fully confirm the details because at the time I'm making this video, the game hasn't released here in North America on the Switch, but it is supposed to be here before the end of the day. Uh, other re regions might already have the game. Obviously, Among Us is massively popular, and I did tell people that once it came to Switch, we'd probably do some Among Us streams over on uh, Twitch. So, you know, at some point in the next week or so, look forward to me actually playing Among Us for the first time uh, and playing probably the Switch version, and you guys can come play with me especially if you happen to be a member of our patreon at patreon.com slash nintendo prime or at twitch sub at twitch.tv slash nintendo prime tv all right 
So there's a bunch of Japanese Switch owners that are extremely unhappy right now as their new systems are bricked out of the box. When trying to set up the system, they agreed with the error code 2162-0002. There is no fix for this error, given how hard it is at times to get your hands on a Switch in Japan and the fact they have done several retail lotteries this year. This is naturally a very frustrating situation. Nintendo of Japan has actually confirmed this issue is widespread enough to comment about it on their Japanese support website, apologizing and asking customers to fill out an online inquiry form so Nintendo can get them a new console sent out ASAP. Early reports are that Nintendo is sending new systems out before requiring the old system sent back. Also, one customer got the impression, based on their interaction, that they might get to keep the Joy-Cons on the old system, which would be kind of a nice gesture for the inconvenience. Uh, this next story is about Cyberpunk. So, you guys see, we're just rapid firing here. Cyberpunk 2077 made the following statement a couple days ago over all the bugs and issues happening. Uh, it says, Dear gamers, first of all, we would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last-gen consoles before it premiered, and, in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yay! They admit fault. All right. Second, we... We will fix bugs and crashes and improve the overall experience. The first round of updates has been just released, and the next one is coming within the next seven days. They actually released it today. Uh, expect more, as we will update frequently whenever new improvements are ready. After the holidays, we'll continue working. We'll release two large patches, starting with patch number one in January. This will be followed by patch number two in February. Together, these should fix the most prominent problems gamers are facing on last-gen consoles. We will be informing you about the contents of each patch ahead of their release. They won't make the game on last-gen look like it's running on a high-spec PC or next-gen system, but it will be closer to that experience than it is now. Finally, we would always like everyone who buys our games to be satisfied with their purchase. We would appreciate if you would continue to give us a chance. But if you are not pleased with the game on your console and don't want to wait for updates, you can opt to refund your copy for copies purchased digitally. Please use the refund system on PlayStation Network or Xbox, respectively. For box versions, please first try to get a refund at the store where you bought the game. Should this not be possible, please contact us at, you know, help me refund at cdprojectred.com and we will do our best best to help you starting from today you can contact us for a week until december 21st 2020 now, that's important for physical copies of course because most phys most stores will not take back a physical game if it has actually uh, been opened uh that's open box policy so they will not take refunds for that typically uh so you can still get physical refunds through them but if you bought digitally you're kind of screwed. Now, this re this report made it sound like, hey, if you got a digital thing, just go to PlayStation Network and Xbox and get a refund. Not so fast. So despite these claims, PlayStation and Xbox have denied refunds. For Xbox, they actually state all digital sales are final. So it wasn't really possible on Xbox anyways. And they're just staying consistent with their publicly known policies. So even mentioning you could get this game refunded on Xbox was just a lie. Uh, for PlayStation, they do offer refunds within 14 days, unless the game has a streaming aspect to it, like if there's any streaming content into the game, which basically a majority of AAA games do, hence the required internet connections. Um, so, yeah, they do contain a clause on PlayStation that people thought this would be covered on by saying that the game is faulty for getting around this policy. However, it is notable that, that Sony had to approve of the release of this game on PlayStation, so they likely don't feel like the game is actually actually faulty enough to fall within this policy so even though it's well within 14 days to get a refund reality is playstation is denying the refunds and asking that customers wait yes telling customers to wait for patches there are some customers notably that have gone through multiple reps and found one that would give them a a, a, a refund but that is not actually common most customers are being entirely denied. Obviously, certain uh, reps might be more palpable to your situation, but they're technically not supposed to give you a refund. So if you happen to get one, to consider yourself lucky. So CD Projekt Red was getting a lot of flack for this because CD Projekt Red made it sound like Sony and Microsoft were, were going to give refunds, uh, and they're not. So they did a conference call, and while they were pressed for answers about this on a conference call, all they stated is that they are not going to get special treatment for the refunds and will not be lowering the price of the game on older systems because they feel like the game is playable. So, there you go. 
Uh, they do ask for customers to have patience as they release patches. And as I noted earlier, they already released another patch today. It's their second patch uh, specifically for last-gen systems. And there's going to be some major patches coming up. This is a mess of a situation. Uh, CD Projekt Red probably should have never put in there uh, that you can get refunds on PlayStation Network and Xbox. They, said you, they should have said you can attempt to contact support and get a refund within their already known policies. That would have been a more correct statement to say. The way they worded it made it sound like, hey, just contact support and you can get a refund. No, that's not the case. And they didn't check with support before making that statement. So just really pour on them. Now, to kind of uh, end all of this, we have Nintendo, PlayStation, and Microsoft teaming up. Yes, folks, teaming up. I never thought I'd see the day when the, all the platform holders would come together to release one. I'm just kidding. They're not coming together to release one ultimate platform. Uh, but they are coming to, together uh, to help people. So gaming giants Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox have shared details on their united commitment to make gaming a safer place for all players. Dave McCarthy, corporate vice president of Xbox operations, shared in a new post on the official Xbox website today, highlighting the basic principles that sit at the heart of each company's work. We believe gaming is for all people of all ages, including our youngest and most vulnerable players. Technology makes compelling entertainment experiences possible, and we want to ensure that those that experience, especially those when they involve interactions with others, are positive and respectful. At Xbox, we are aligned with Nintendo on behalf of the community of Nintendo Switch players and PlayStation in our belief that protecting players online requires a multidisciplinary approach, one that combines the benefits of advanced technology, a supportive community, and skilled human oversight. We can accomplish more when we work towards the same goal, and so we will con each continue investing in, evolving, and amplifying our approaches to user safety. As we continue this work, we will practice protecting the safety of our players, especially those that are most vulnerable, and here are the key principles. Prevention. Empower players and parents to understand and control gaming experiences. We provide controls that let players customize their gaming experience. We support parents with the tools and information necessary to create appropriate gaming experiences for their children. We recognize that the safety features to be useful, they must be easy to use, and we will promote the availability of our safety tools through our platforms, support channels, services, and our websites and in retail stores to reach more players and parents. We continually inform our parents and players through our codes of contact, terms of use, and our enforcement of practices. We invest in technology to help thwart improper conduct and content before a player is subject to harm. The partnership. We have committed to a partnership with industry, regulators, law enforcement, and our communities to advance user safety. And the industry's commitment to safety is central. We believe that we have an opportunity to collaborate for the benefit of the video game industry and all players to offer a safer gaming experience. We will work with industry trade organizations, industry members, regulators, law enforcement experts to help develop and advance online safety initiatives. We commit to conducting shared research for the benefit of the industry. We believe that hate and harassment or exploitation of younger players in any way have no place in gaming. We partner with our community to promote safe gaming behavior and encourage the use of reporting tools to call out bad actors. We partner with the ratings agencies such as the ESRB and PEGI to ensure our games are rated for the appropriate audience. The responsibilities. We hold ourselves accountable for making our platforms as safe for all players. We make it easy for players to report violations for our code and conduct. And in addition to removing content, we take appropriate enforcement actions for violations, including restricting players from using our services for misconduct. We comply with all local laws and will respond to all lawful requests from law enforcement. We promptly notify law enforcement if we observe unlawful contact and where we believe a player is at risk of Im imminent harm. We publish our rules and requirements and we ensure the players ha we, we, who have been reported understand the requirements for continued engagement with our platforms. This is a lot to read. Um, basically, they conclude by protecting players can be challenging in a digitally and often instantaneously connected world. This partnership signifies our commitment to work together to improve player safety and ensure gaming remains truly for everyone. While the video game industry has a long history of taking t steps to protect gamers, especially children, we rec recognize that no company or industry will solve these challenges alone. We welcome others to make and share the commitments to players everywhere. So basically, they're all working together to protect children. I think this is overall a good thing. Uh, we are in an ever-connected world. Uh, it, parents need help sometimes because they don't always understand everything with technology. I, I, I think that this is um, a good 
uh, a good thing for the industry. I don't think there's anything you can read into this that's negative. I like that they're going to be sharing their stats all together. They're going to be working together to make things stronger and better for everyone. Uh, this also kind of is a little ironic to me because if you guys remember one of Sony's argument for not supporting cross-platform play with Minecraft had to do with protecting children, and then here they are partnering with Microsoft and Nintendo, which had cross-platform play with Minecraft, to protect children. Anyone sees see just a slight little irony? Not not to slight Sony too bad here. Other companies have made mistakes in the past too. I'm just saying that like it feels a little ironic to me that Sony's part of this. But hey, it's cool. I'm glad this is happening. This is nothing but good news. Uh, I know there's gonna be people out there like who cares about the children? I'm not a child. Like it's fine. You know the children are the worst. The children are the one on Call of Duty yelling and swearing at people, and they want to prevent that too because they don't think that's right. So there's. A lot uh, of work to be done here, but I am glad to see these companies are coming together because nothing but positiveness can come out of this. All right, folks, that's the stories. I told you it's a lot tossed into one video. I don't do this stuff very often, but there was just too much stuff. I had no way I was going to get the all the videos out. Hopefully the editing looks good here because I'm just recording audio and then put, you know superimposing footage and other information over it. Hope it turns out all right because I'm having some issues with my editing software. will be resolved within a week. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe, of course. Let's get 70,000 subscribers. I know we can do it. Together as a community, we can do anything. All right, folks, I'll catch you later.